We hear so much about manifestation these days. So much. It's, so I'd love to hear what new juice that you have. Cheryl, I have known Cheryl for 14 years. And Cheryl and I, yes, we met, we met in the, um, in the Himalayas. We were walking to Everest Base Camp together. And uh, she helped me a lot during this time. It was a kind of a challenging, confusing, dark time for me. And she helped to guide me a little bit on those mountains mentally and spiritually. And yeah, so I'm so grateful for her. And we've reconnected after all these years and share a lot. And I would just love you to hear from her today. So Cheryl, dive in. Uh, Cheryl's a nurse. She's a couples counselor. She's an author of a book called The Currency of Sexual Energy, right? I have that right. Yes. Sexual Energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have one at home. And uh, <laughs> anyhow, so without further ado, I'm going to bring this genius woman on and tell us what you want to talk about, girl. Ah, I want to talk about magic. <laughs> okay, let's uh, go talk about magic. Let's talk about magic. Okay, so, you know, um, like you said, manifesting, it's such a common subject on Instagram these days and, um, you know, Facebook and everyone's posting about manifestation. Uh, but there's some really, there's some really finer details that, um, that people miss out on that I feel like really need tuning in on. And they're simple. They're Cheryl, can you um, unmute yourself? Sorry. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, that's good. Can you hear? You can. I could hear that. I could see this strange look on your face, and I didn't know what was going on. No, I was just trying <laughs> to mute. Uh, that's okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so um, magic and manifesting, and there's some really finer details that um, that are overlooked, I think, by a lot of people. And you know, everyone's posting on social media about manifesting and creating the life you want, and vision boards, and and there's some really simple things um, that go that get get missed. But, you know, the first one is your word, and it's like Manifesting is like casting spells on yourself. So your word is so important. And what I mean by your word is like um, saying you're going to do something and then you do it. So it's building integrity. It's building integrity with yourself. It's building integrity with the universe so that what you say actually happens. And you're sending messages um, to the universe to say that your, that your word actually has weight that your word actually has meaning. You know, often these days we get sidelined or sidetracked by better offers. You know, we say we're going to do something and then something else crops up and we go, oh, I'd rather do this. I'm going to dump that now and I'm going to go and do this on a whim. And, you know, sometimes that's okay when, um, you know, when something doesn't vibrate well with us, yes, drop it and and go towards it in this other direction but it's just the little things like um say you're in this reset community and you you say okay i my desire is to totally reshape my body i want fitness this year i want health i want strength i'm going to do this reset and you say you're going to do it and then two days in uh you 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 um, get distracted by something else and all the sessions that you say you're going to do, you don't do it. And, you, and then you beat yourself up. Oh, I'll try better next time. And that's just a simple example, but it's a very important example. So when you say, okay, I'm going to do the power yoga with Kerry um, on this day and I'm going to do this session on this day, then when you actually no matter how hard it is for you and you actually go through with it, that's when you are strengthening your word to yourself. 
and you're strengthening your word to the universe. So what you say, what you say happens. So it's a good idea to, you know, in the morning, have a morning routine, get up every morning and actually write down in great detail. Well, today I'm going to clean up the kitchen, but be even more specific. Like today, I'm going to clean up the kitchen. I'm going to sort out my spice into my spice rack. I'm going to sort my herbs onto my second shelf. And then I'm going to clean out all the flower crumbs on the bottom shelf and be so specific and then go through with that. And that's like, I know this sounds mundane, but that's the beginnings of casting magic spells on your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, because we were just talking about in the other previous um, talk I had in German, how important the basic things are or the so-called mundane things are. They're, they're so overlooked, but when we overlook them is when there's like holes in, in the process, right? And yeah. so yeah. going back and doing what you said you would do or your word is massive. Cause when I haven't done that is when I feel that energy sinks, right? Yes. Cause I've, cause I've, I've done something to the relationship with myself and the relationship with myself is the biggest relationship. And so the spices on the rack is just a detail. Um, that's it's like, a with the more detail, it's almost like a more self-love thing because that's, I'm going to do that thing and I'm going to do it exactly how I said, you know? Yes. Yes. And it's like when we get giddy, when we actually do something or uh, like attract something with the, the exact detail we said, it'd be yes. almost become giddy because it's like, oh my goodness, that's like, that's what I, exactly what I said, right? So it's that- I yeah, that's how I'm kind of interpreting what you're saying. Yeah, spot on. And I like the way the word used energy. And it does. It changes your energy, you know. And, and, and as you know, energy is everything in manifestation, the energy. And, I mean, that, that's my, a part of my second tip, which is my second tip has got to do with a, a science called epigenetics. And um, the second tip is your environment. Now, by environment, I mean, yes, this environment, but also internal environment, your energy, your internal energy. So the first tip affects the second stage or the second tip with manifesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, you know, when you are low energy, um, when your thoughts, your thoughts affect your cellular body. Your thoughts affect your energy. Your thoughts affect your manifestation power. So your thoughts are a part of your environment. So the, the latest science on epigenetics, which is, which kind of, it doesn't totally override genetics, but it, it definitely it adds to it. It, it. It's another level. It's another level of genetics. And it, what epigenetics tells us is that, um, you know, if your cells of your body, the DNA in your body, you're programmed to, there's a line of bowel cancer in your family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, genetics says, well, you're likely to get bowel cancer. But epigenetics says it's it, the, the cells in your body, the DNA needs the environment to switch on that program, that DNA program. So your environment of your cells is what causes the DNA to cause the bowel cancer. Mm -hmm. So um, environment, which is, yes, it's like if you're living in a dump, you don't like where you live, it's depressing, it's dark, um, the people you're around um, don't resonate with you, you know, that is going to affect your manifesting power that's going to affect your epigenetics and your energy and um and also the thoughts the thoughts that you put into your body which links with your intention and sticking to your word and the power of intention does that make sense that's a little bit deep 
a little bit. So I know yes. This. And I know each one of those things you said, you could talk t- an entire talk on all of that, or just one of these t- three tips you're giving is yes. you could talk forever, but the environment right away, I think of the internal it's, it's this environment, but it's the internal environment, our thoughts and the energy and yeah, the, who we hang around. That's automatically what, what I think when you're talking environment yeah. and it's, and it's massive massive Mm. yeah they're they're all important i can't really say i mean our thoughts are are massive and taking responsibility to change them or to have like a guard in front of the mind saying you know this one's good but this one's staying out you know like like to have (laughs) someone managing that having being able to manage your thoughts is is uh massive in Mm. manifestation Yes, carry on, Cheryl. Yeah, so that's, um, and you know about my intention cards. That's why I like to set an intention card each day or, or you an intention each day. And, you know, that's, I didn't bring them today because I went for a walk down the lake and left them at home. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll have to do that another day. Mm-hmm. But the third tip is the most exciting or the, the fun part, the most magical for me. And this one, you know, I've recently, it's recent, recently been more um, concreted for me or affirmed for me. And that's the, you know, often we set our intention or we want to manifest our ideal life or what we think is ideal. And our ideals don't really come from our heart. Our ideals come from um, a lot of the time society, our upbringing, our teachers, which influences, um, you know, what we think we want, what we think we desire. And that doesn't have very much energy behind it. It doesn't have very much weight behind it. So it's very hard to manifest from your ideals. Because a lot of the time, um, there's a lot of collective unconscious negative energy around those ideas where there's a lot of oppositional forces. So what I'm getting to is that the most important thing for manifesting is desire. And it's not just, oh, I want this. It's, It's so much more than just, I want this. You know, it, it, you really, really have to check in with your feelings and does this actually turn me on? Mm-hmm. So it's more of, a, it's not just a fluffy, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could have a house in the mountains and maybe, you know, have some, a beautiful vegetable garden and live sustainably or, you know, it, it's got to be and in there's got to be intensity behind it. There's got to be actual physical turn on and excitement, physical excitement in your body when you um, formulate or, or look at those ideals. So because often we manifest from our unconscious mm-hmm. and um, we think we consciously want something, but it's just the thought. It's, it's not, it doesn't have any weight behind it, but ultimately our unconscious rules our manifestation. So if we go, we go deep into um, our desires and, and just find out what we are unconsciously driven by, and that's probably a bit harder than it sounds. Um, but yeah. Can you say something on that, you know, that turn on, that desire, that experience of, of focusing on what gets your juices going? Because I know you like this subject too. Yeah, well, the, I de- with manifesting, I don't, I don't believe there's anything more important than that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it, I, I do believe, though, some people that have certain d- desires, they're the doubt can come in and get in the way of the, the, uh, the juice of it, the turn on the doubt yeah. that, that will come to me. 
but then again, I don't think they've gotten to the real root. What What's the real desire? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it might not be the weight loss. It might, it's a certain feeling they're desiring, you know? Yeah. yeah. Why we, why do we want the weight loss? Okay. Well, I think I'll feel sexy and feel attractive. Okay. Why is it important for you to feel sexy and attractive? What's that going to do in your life? Well, Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll attract, finally attract a man or, I'll be confident finally. I think there's layers, right? Yes. To the real yeah, there is. turn on. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, all those that thought processing you were laying out, it's like you have to go into each one of those and find out what turns you on about those. So um, you know, I I want to lose weight uh, to look sexy. And, you know, hold that thought in your body and and does it actually turn you on or is it like um, an expectation that you've put on your shoulders from watching too much YouTube or Instagram? Um, It's got to, the desires you manifest have to so um, resonate with your body, have to, they have to create a physical reaction and, um, and often you can find out what your desires are because sometimes we don't even know what our desires are. Sometimes we can find out our desires when we um, see someone achieving something, um, being acknowledged for something, and there's this twinge within us of like almost jealousy and like, oh, my God. Uh, and, and that is an indication of, oh, my goodness, that's, uh, uh, that's actually my desire and they're achieving it. So, you know, we think jealousy is, we put a label, jealousy is bad. It's actually a good indicator. Of what you want, <laughs> of what you really want. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. So, um, And a good indicator that you can have that too. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's raining. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, it's, um, there's something I wanted to say on, I just thought that so something you said, something I wanted to s- respond on that um, about the desire. It's so, yeah, there's not, uh, what I think happens when people don't entertain the, the feeling of it, right? On a regular basis, sometimes they're entertaining just ideas of what they should do. Yes. Like, um, well, why do you want to lose weight? Because I was told to, or it's, it's not healthy to have, but is that really a motivator for us? Is that really a, what's your own intrinsic inspiration to do it? Is it because you have to, or is it because you, you desire like what's underneath it? That's, this is what I, I'm feeling, right? And I have yeah, to do, yeah. I have to constantly do it with myself and reevaluate. Is this what I truly want? Does this turn me mm. on? Like you said, does this mm. feeling like, like light me up? When I think of a, when I think of the VW bus as my coffee bus, like serving coffee, I, I get excited, like literally turned on mostly because I have no idea how that's going to happen when and where and I just think I know the color of the bus, but, uh, (laughs) and that the coffee's damn good. Um, But, but, and that's part of the fun of it. So I, I think it it has to be fun. It has to feel fun. It it can't feel like the biggest chore in the world. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, this is, this is leading me to my next tip. I've got a, this is a bonus tip and this is a deeper layer. This is a, a deeper layer of, of that desire. And it's a little bit um, harder to, to grasp. So I'm going to put it as simply as I can. So if you have a desire, like you said, um, you know, the losing, the losing weight, the, you know, the sexy body, the losing weight. And, and the, the, the tip is to go into the opposite feeling. So go deep into like find a it's 
find a, a calm environment without distractions and really, really meditate or go deep onto manifesting the opposite. So um, finding the turn on in being like overweight and round and soft and chubby and see how that resonates with you. And when you do that, you may find that the reason why you haven't lost weight, why you haven't got the body that you want, is because actually being a bit round and chubby turns you on. And that's what you've manifested. You've manifested because um, Carl Jung, famous psychologist, says um, having what you have is evidence of wanting it. So what you already have is evidence of already wanting it. Unconscious, so, unconscious you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. if you go into the opposite, if you go deep into the opposite, the feeling of the opposite and find out that, well, actually being a bit overweight, actually I feel quite turned on in this body. Well, what turns me on about it? Well, you know, um, I'm nice and cuddly and that turns me on or uh, yeah, it really turns me on when I'm wearing a bikini and I can repulse people out. You know, that's a turn off for me. So <laughs> this is another layer, another layer deeper to the turn on of the desire. And I know um, this is a maybe a, a challenging topic for people. And I know Cheryl is studying this deeper now and she's bringing it out there, um, looking at the opposite side of things. And there's something really powerful in it. I've been doing a little bit of it with her. That's why she's just putting a little taste out here. But um, I love the phrase of, like you said, Carl Jung, like, like what we see out there is evidence of what, what we want. And sometimes, e even if it's what money or a certain body, if there's lack there of it, right? There's something that that's serving to us. Yes. Right. Yeah. In, in a way, like there's something that not having money or not having the body that, uh, that is obviously beautiful to my eyes and feels good. in. it's serving something might be attention might be, um, you know, yeah, there's, there's different things, people coming to help me or, um, yeah, it's, it can be complex, but part of it's simple too. Yeah, and a good example of that is abundance and scarcity. You know, we all think we want abundance, but if you go deep, there's something that actually turns me on about scarcity. And when I go deeper into that, you know, I realize that I love minimalism. I love, um, you know, not being cluttered. I love surviving on bare minimum and that turns me on so you know we may think that we want scarcity money stuff cars boats and all of that but when you go deep into it the scarcity of minimalism is an actual big turn on the less cluttered your life is the simpler it is the freer your mind is and yes. and, and the happier you are so uh, I, yeah. yes i have to now that i got this thought because cheryl's saying this because Cheryl has lived all of it. She's lived uh, minimal and living on a boat for years. And then she moved into full abundance with everything she wants, cars, you name it, You've where you could have anything, right, Cheryl? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, now, <laughs> and now she's called back her boat, her minimalistic life, her bought her soul has been craving that and they just got the boat and it's going to happen in a month's time yes yeah we're going up we're going up this weekend to finalize everything and then um february 24th it will be ours and we'll be sailing um yeah and we'll you're gonna sailing how, on the 24th how minimal are you now moving back to ah uh, minimal as in three pairs of shorts, three t-shirts, one towel, you know, bare minimum. Does this turn you on? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's it, yeah. When I first came here from Canada to Europe with a backpack in front and a backpack behind, I had, that's all I had with me. No car. 
I said, I want to see how long I can go with no car. I love the feeling of no car. I love, you know what I mean? And cars connect us to that abundance. But to me, the abundance was having the freedom of not needing one and to hop on a train and to run everywhere. And it's all, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, the whole dynamics of what we want and why we want it and all that. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I think that's my biggest my biggest tip for the day is number four. <laughs> okay, so just going through number one, you said is your word is number one, right? Sticking to yeah, your, word. your word. Yep, that's your magic spell. Yeah. And number two is the environment, internal, external, what you surround yourself uh-huh. with, right? It's massive. Number yeah. three is your desire. Is it does it turn you on? Is it really your desire? Right? And the yep. bonus tip is just checking into looking at the opposite of your desire and to see, does that like, or what's in your life? What do I actually see? Cause this is what I unconsciously have called in. Yeah. Yeah. My good student. <laughs> you are the, you are a top A student. <laughs> Beautiful. Cheryl, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming on here in the mind body group. And I love your wisdom and just the different side you you give things and post in the chat here, anybody, if you're watching or have watched anything that comes up that you liked, anything you didn't like, anything that landed for you, whatever, put it in the chat. Yep. And girlfriend, I know you're starting your day. We're ending ours. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. Go run in the rain, sister. Okay, thank you. It's always wonderful talking to you, Kerry. It's just uh, starting my day with a uh, like a shot of energy talking to you. <laughs> I love it. Well, I wish I was running in the rain with you now. Or I'd yeah. sit and have a coffee in the rain with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, girlfriend, okay, thank soon. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Mwah. you. Bye. Bye.